Ooh. Oh, that didn't feel good. Uh oh. What was that? What was that? That's fine. What was that? I think it's okay. What was that? I felt like something broke. Did something break? There was... Welcome back Sprocketeers to another episode of Safi Sprocket. Now if you've been following my journey so far, you'll know that I recently headed over to Ireland in a bid to do a practice run for a much bigger trip. However, what I didn't take into consideration was, well, many things. Like having some degree of organisation, direction and, well, general bike maintenance. The end result was one missing GoPro, a dodgy chain and now a horrific clunk noise in the middle of nowhere. So by this point I'm freaking out and I decided to do what every logical Englishman should do in times of peril. Make a brew and wait for it all to blow over. So after a fuel break and a clean head, I came back to my bike with a fresh perspective. The noise that I had heard was somewhat akin to a rather large clunk. Judging by the fact that my chain was a lot tighter than it should be, I suspected that the adjusters had somewhat shifted coming up the bumpy road. Now, unfortunately for me, I'm not mechanically inclined on the best of days. However, luckily enough, I could tell that the chain was suddenly a lot tighter than it should be. So the plan of action was to spend the afternoon getting out of the mountains and finding somewhere to stay for the evening so I could take a better look at it. Maybe it wasn't... Hmm. I'll be fine. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. I reckon there's a storm coming in. Just look at those clouds. So uh, I reckon we get to the next stop in an hour-ish and see, we'll reevaluate. I'd like to continue with the West Atlantic way, but also I'm not gonna do it when it's raining. So, oh man, I've got like a, a stomach full of food and this road, oh, I can see, I can see. I hope I don't throw up, but here we go. I am feeling much better, much more refreshed. And uh, we're in Ireland, guys. We're in Ireland on a crazy mountain path and I'm fully fed and energetic again. So let's go for it. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god, these roads are so scary.
So I finally made my way onto the Ring of Kerry, and it's 5pm. I'm not gonna lie, I'm ready to wrap up my day and find a campsite to crash in. However folks, I'd made the biggest error imaginable on the road, and I'd lost track of what day it is. Now I know what you're thinking, how on earth do you lose track of what day it is? And honestly, I don't know, but somehow it's easily done when you're on the road devoid from modern technology. So... I kind of forgot what day it was. And my ferry is tomorrow morning, and I'm on the Ring of Kerry, and I need to be in Dublin. F <laughs> oh my god, what have I done? I got like so like consumed up in Kinsale, I didn't realise. Oh, okay, right, okay, we're gonna have to go, okay. Plan of action. How far is Dublin? I'll be honest folks, by this point, the entire trip felt like a write-off. It was just one disaster after another, and I was feeling pretty low. With this trip, I'd wanted to push myself and to put myself in a situation where I'd have to make decisions on a daily basis rather than pre-planning everything. However, I didn't really have the right experience to be in this situation. So I looked at my map and from the Ring of Kerry to Dublin was 400 kilometers. And by this point, I'm ready to push on through to get to the ferry and just simply get home. Now, I have absolutely no idea where I was planning to sleep that evening. My plan was just to arrive to get to Dublin docks by 2 a.m. and worst case scenario, sleep in the dockyard. So it's currently 6 p.m. I'm 400 kilometers away from the ferry port and my ferry leaves at 6 a.m. As you can tell by the sky, a storm is starting to roll in. I knew I was in for a terrible evening ahead of me. And funnily enough, it's almost like Ireland knew I was in a rush too. So nightfall started to creep in slowly and silently. I still had a few hours to go until I reached Dublin. By this point, I'm spending one hour on the bike and 30 minutes off trying to rest. In between the rides, I'm trying to book accommodation last minute, so I had somewhere to stay for the night. However, my efforts were proving fruitless. It was clear that I'd have to inevitably wild camp somewhere or head towards the dock and await for the sunrise. As the night went on, I started to get more and more frustrated at myself. I was upset, I was tired, and I was cold. I'd spent the last 30 minutes trying to ring through to campsites with no luck. I decided to risk it and continue towards Dublin, but I felt utterly hopeless and lost, and I had no idea what to do. It was 9 p.m. by this point and I had finally hit the mental barrier. Whilst I was physically fine to continue riding, mentally I was struggling. There was a tiny voice inside my head that just kept telling me I couldn't do it. All I wanted to do was just sit down and have a good cry. However, the rain had started to fall and I had absolutely no choice but just to push on further and try and ignore my feelings. I was now 30 minutes outside of Dublin and it was coming up to midnight. Whilst I was traveling down the road, I had spotted a sign for a campsite and I decided to try my luck. However, when I arrived at the campsite, it was fully locked up. 
by this point I knew I couldn't continue riding and I was hedging my bets on pitching up my tent just next to the entrance when suddenly so I made it to the campsite it's midnight I'm half an hour outside of Dublin uh, the guy he told me off because uh, I obviously came so late um, apparently you're not supposed to check in this late but they took pity on me <laughs> I'm so close to crying this is horrible I just need to get my So last night I got to the campsite. Oh. <sighs> I got to the campsite at midnight. Uh, and all the gates were shut. But luckily there was like a delivery guy dropping some food off. So one of the residents was at the gate. So I was just like, is there any way I can like sleep? I've got nowhere to sleep. So he went and asked, like, the security guard, um, and he let me in. I got a telling off, because <laughs> it was midnight. And then they told me to get to bed, we will settle the bill in the morning, um, but, uh, to turn my bike off because the babies were sleeping. <laughs> so he started pushing my bike through this campsite. And then in like 10 minutes, there's like people trying to help me put my tent up. <laughs> and people are like trying to feed me crisps. <laughs> and I'm like trying to be so discreet. Just like... <sighs> oh, I can't wait to go home. I'm so tired. I started to sleepily make my way to the ferry to head back to England. I felt like Ireland had chewed and spat me out. This trip had been the most difficult trip for me to undertake mentally. And I knew that when I finally made it home in England, that I'd need to take some time off to process everything that went wrong before venturing back on the road. I felt like up until this point, I'd managed to get by solely on a positive attitude and some degree of luck. However, with my biggest trip yet fast approaching, I knew that I needed to have a serious sit down and think about how I was going to approach traveling in the future. And with that in mind, I felt like I left Ireland a little bit more mature with my newfound realization that if I was going to up my game, there was a few things I needed to change. <laughs> 